This is Read Align, Do Align Cooking.com. My name is Mike Pierce. Welcome to my kitchen and welcome to my home. What we're gonna do today is a little different. So one of the things that comes up as we start talking about learning how to cook would be how do you outfit a kitchen? And so when I first started thinking about doing this, well, even before the videos, when I started thinking about learning how to cook, I kind of looked around my kitchen and realized I've got some problems. A lot of the stuff I, was, I had wasn't very good and I was missing things and some stuff was pretty bad and some might be broken and whatnot. And so I had to buy some stuff. So the question is, if you were just starting out, what do you need? And I don't necessarily have the answers, but one of my books does. So this book, The Competent Cook by Lauren Braun Costello, whoever that is, chapter two is your essential tools. And this book mentions the essential 20, okay? So the 20, uh, items that every kitchen should have. Okay, so let me read you the list and then we'll go through them one at a time. And I'll show you, I have, I have, I have 19 of the 20 here. So it says a uh, chef's knife, paring knife, bread knife, cutting board, can opener, spatula, wooden spoon, ladle, tongs, peeler, kitchen shears, saute pans, baking pan, sheet pan, sauce pan, stock pot, strainer or colander, uh, measuring cups and spoons, mixing bowls, and a whisk. Okay, so we'll go through those one at a time. So the first thing is a chef's knife. You guys see my knives back there. I actually have two chef's knives. It's a long story I'll get into. So these are them. You don't need two. This is redundant. I shouldn't have bought two. The reason I bought two was this one was the first one I bought, and I really like it and it came in a set with the paring knife that we'll mention in a second, okay? It's a nice knife, I love it, whatever. Then I saw this knife, and it's got those little divots in it. It's a, a term for them, I don't really care what it is. They're supposed to keep food from sticking to the blade. I don't think they work that well, I don't really care. I really like both of these knives. They just both feel great in my hand. I tend to use this one more, but it doesn't matter, okay? So the thing about a knife, a chef's knife. Let me show you my old knives. This is a piece of junk. Everything in here is junk. Notice it's missing some knives. Okay. Here's my old, oh, I keep doing that. <laughs> Here's my old chef's knife. Okay. This is a piece of junk. Look at the blade. Whoops, not that side. That side. You see it? It's serrated. Yeah, that's how you can tell it's a piece of junk. <sighs> the reason I've lost knives out of my block is that I didn't take very good care of them and this is wood and I'd let it get wet and I just leave it in the sink and then eventually wash it. Well, the wood absorbs the water and then it keeps the water against this. This is the tang, this is part of the blade. And my blades keep snapping right here because they're rusting from me not taking good care of them, okay? So you don't wanna do that. That whole block, I need to, I'm gonna throw it away. The only reason I've kind of kept it is I don't have any steak knives. So I'm just gonna take the steak knives out, which are junk too, but I don't have any better ones. I bought these, one of the reasons I bought them. The whole thing is metal, the whole thing is steel. There's nothing to break. So I don't have to worry about that, okay? In the book here, they talk about different materials for knives, okay? They talk about high carbon steel, which is what these are. They hold a good blade, they don't react with food, and they don't rust if you take decent care of them. They also mention ceramic knives and titanium knives. And in both cases, they say similar things, basically that they're fine. Uh, the ceramic can chip, the titanium's not as uh, hard as steel, so it doesn't hold the edge as long. They both require special tools to sharpen. I didn't want that. This knife can last me the rest of my life. In fact, I would recommend you buy this knife you know, one like it, and a paring knife, mine were a set. So they save money, those two knives last the rest of your life. So when you buy a knife like this, it's ridiculously sharp. One of the things you do with a good knife every time you use it, and I don't show you on the videos because I don't want to bore you guys, but you hone it, okay? That's not sharpening a knife. It's, sharpening a knife would be taking this knife, you have a stone, you have some oil, and you, you work it, okay? I don't know how to do it. I'll probably learn. We'll make a video. That's not what we're doing. Honing, so this is your blade. And as you use it, this is what happens to the end of your blade. 
When you hone it, you're just pushing them back up. It's all you're doing, okay? So it's not really sharpening, but it's making it appear sharper. So all you do is a honing steel. You can find these in thrift stores if you want. They're pretty cheap. I would just buy a new one. 90 degrees. Half of that, 45 degrees. Half of that, 22 and a half. That's about where you want to be, okay? 20, 25, it's probably fine. The main thing is do it the same way every time. Okay, and you just go. I realize I'm not, this is the most amazing thing. That's all you do. I do it a couple times, then I go use it. That's it. But if you do that, your blade will last a lot longer. Now a blade like this, when this eventually gets dull and honing it no longer does anything good for me, I'm gonna have to either learn how to sharpen it or pay someone to sharpen this. You do not put a knife like this through an electric sharpener like on the back of your can opener or something. This knife, well this knife and the paring knife together I think were 200 bucks. This knife was 200 bucks. You don't want to wreck these knives. They're really nice. They feel great. They balance really well. I mean they're just, they feel great. I've, mo I've never had knives like this. You'll appreciate them once you have one. You don't need two. This is a waste. I should mention, this is a magnetic knife bar. They're either 20 or 40 bucks, I forget. The end caps come off and you can screw this in. I did not screw them in because one, this is tile. You could have, but I'm selling this house soon. And you, if you don't, if you're not into cooking, you don't want one of these knife, knife bars because you may not have nice knives to put on them and then it just looks dumb. So this is held up by double-sided tape and one of the problems with that knife bar is on the back, it's not smooth. It just has two rails. So there's almost nothing for um, double-sided tape to stick to. So after about three months, it fell down. So I bought Gorilla Glue double-sided tape and it's been about seven months. It's not even getting loose at all. It feels great. So hopefully it'll stick. Just thought I'd mention it in case anyone's interested in those things. When I got it, I mean, I was, I thought I was the coolest cat. I mean, just, that looks great. It's a way to show off your knives. I think it makes the whole kitchen look better. It looks more professional, it's gorgeous. I'm like, wow, what a modern world we live in. And I thought I was cool. And then I bought this book, Secrets of Better Cooking by Reader's Digest, copyright 1973. And I don't know if you can see this. See what's in there? That is a knife bar. And you see the knives on them, they're kind of uh, screwed up, but that's because they're uh, low carbon steel and they've rusted and gotten tarnished and stained or whatever. A high carbon steel doesn't do that. But the point is, I thought that was all modern and apparently in 73 they had them. They probably had them years before that. Who knew? Okay, the next thing they mentioned after the chef's knife, and by the way, when you get a good chef's knife, you stop using almost every other knife you own. I, that's almost all I use. It's very rare I use a different knife. When I do, I use this knife. This is a paring knife. It's essentially just a small chef's knife. I like it. You do the exact same thing every time. I don't know what else to tell you. You use this for smaller stuff that you wouldn't use the big knife for. That's it. Works great. You should buy one. And again, you can get them in a set. This is some sort of little paring knife. I think I've used it once or twice. I don't know why I bought it. Maybe someday I'll think of a good use for it. I don't need it. The next thing the list says is a bread knife. This is a bread knife. I love this bread knife. I've never used this bread knife because I don't bake yet, but I love it. And here's why I love it. You see the finish on it? Hang on, let's get the angle right. Look at that. A little dimpled, hand banged. Oh, it's just awesome. But anyways, if you look at the blade, that's what makes a bread knife. It's the sawtooth, okay? The only thing wrong with this knife, other than the fact that I've never used it, is this right here. See that? That's a dimple. It's for your thumb, okay? For your right thumb. I'm left-handed. I paid $200 for a right-handed bread knife, which means every time I use it, it's gonna piss me off. But it's gorgeous. I mean, it really is gorgeous. And I can't wait until I start baking to start using it just because I've been sitting up here for a year and I haven't used it. It seems like kind of a waste. So anyways, those are the three knives they tell you to have. Chef's knife, paring knife, bread knife. Bread knife, you don't need a bread knife unless you bake bread. 
or buy a lot of loaves of French bread or whatever at the store that are uncut. I've never used it. I intend to use it. Someday I'll use it. And whatever. Next thing on the list is a cutting board. Cutting board. Everyone should have a bunch of them, more than one. Uh, on the down angle camera I usually use, sometimes you'll see the big one I have. It has, some, has a little uh, indent, kind of a, a gutter around the sides to keep the juices and things from uh, going all over your counter. It's kind of handy. I love these though, these little ones. I have three of them. You can beat them up. You can throw them in your dishwasher. You, whatever. Uh, people, some people like the, the wooden ones. The wooden ones have a little more give to them, which is, makes it easier on your knives. These have some give to them. What I like about these, they're hard to break, they're hard to rack. Uh, I just use them, throw them in the sink, wash them, they can dry. Uh, every time I run my dishwasher, I tend to put all my cutting boards in so that they get that high temp scrub or whatever, just in case. They're not expensive. You won't find good ones at thrift stores usually. You might as well just buy them new. Um, that's about it. You need, you need several. I guess there's one more thing. Some people buy them in different colors and they have different colors for different things. And the main thing they want to do is have one cutting board or two cutting boards that's just for meat because they worry about cross-contamination, which is probably a legitimate concern. Uh, the way I get around that is most of, well, first of all, I have several. And one of the things I do is I tend to do vegetables first, then the meat on this. I'm going to use the same cutting board. Otherwise, just buy more cutting boards. They're not very expensive. Next, we're going to talk about a can opener. Not talk much because there's not much to talk about. Here's a can opener. Don't buy these at thrift stores. You'll find ones that somebody else got pissed about because they eventually wear out and they piss you off. They will not puncture right. They won't move the can right. They'll just annoy you. So buy a good one. They're not that expensive. It's worth having a good one. And when it starts to piss you off, go buy another good one because this will never get better if it gets worse, if it gets bad. The only other thing I would tell you, I mean, they have electric ones. I think they're a waste of money because, and I also don't want it on my counter. They have ones that mount on your wall. I'm not mounting anything in this kitchen like that. However, these are great. The only thing I would tell you is this blade will eventually dull and that's what's going to piss you off. However, it also gets dirty. So not to be gross here, but this, I tend to wash mine. I just run it under the sink every time I use it. Every once in a while, I'll run a brush with some soap on it and try and get it clean. And the reason is, just think of a typical week where you're using this a lot. So Monday, you make some tuna fish. This goes into the tuna can a little. And Tuesday, you make a tuna casserole. So this goes into your uh, cream of mushroom soup or your can of corn or whatever you put into your casserole. And then maybe on Wednesday it goes into your refried beans and Thursday into, I don't know, another can of soup or something. Aren't you kind of transferring that bacteria from place to place to place to place? It's kind of gross. So try and keep it clean. And that's it. There's not much to this. Don't buy it at a thrift store and keep it clean. Next, spatula. Now when they talk spatula, they mean two different things. This is a spatula. It's also called a turner. I have a bunch of them, metal and plastic. I don't know why I have metal ones. I'll never use metal on that. Maybe it's for the barbecue. I use this. I might've got this at a thrift store. If I did, makes sense. If I didn't, I could have. These things are a dime a dozen. Nobody cares. You just need a few. You need at least one, okay? But when I think of spatulas, what I think of is these, okay? So this is my main rubber spatula. I got this at the restaurant supply store. Not as good as I was hoping. It says heat resistant. Apparently it's not heat proof because I've already damaged it a bit. And my other one is in the dishwasher because it turned pink from tomato sauce. So try and buy good ones. Probably better than this. I'll get a better one. This is a small one. It works great. I got this at a better store and it's nice. This one's cool too. This one has a, it's curved. It's good for, and so is this one. They're both good for getting stuff out of jars and cans. The only thing you gotta be careful of is if your can opener <clears throat> opens the top of the can, like mine does, then that rim is really sharp. This can get cut, and mine has some cuts on it already. You probably can't see them, but there's some cuts on it from, I didn't get it all the way in the can when I tried to do this, and I just cut it along that edge. If you have a side cutting one, 
uh, side cutting can opener that avoids this problem. The problem is, I don't think you can get by with just a side cutting can opener, at least I can't. How do you drain your tuna? You don't have a top to put it in. Now I have a tuna press, but a lot of people you just use the lid, right? Or your can of mushrooms, your can of green beans, your can of corn, you always press the lid in and that's how you make it drain. Yeah, otherwise, what do you do? Put it in a colander? It seems like a waste. So I like the ones that uh, cut on the top, but I may get one that cuts on the side just to save my spatula sometimes. It would make more sense. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about briefly, they say you should have wooden spoons. This is my only wooden spoon. I'm not a huge fan. I know they love them. I just like cooking with spatulas, but they like them because they don't heat up. They don't react with food and they're inexpensive. You're not going to find good ones at a thrift store, I don't think and they're not very expensive, so you might as well buy them new, okay? Next, they tell you to have a ladle. This is a ladle. My ladle is ambidextrous because it can be poured on each side because it got the little di uh, dimples, okay? That's all you need to know. It's a ladle. They're inexpensive. You can always find them at thrift stores, but they're also inexpensive to buy at discount stores, Walmart, Target, big lots, doesn't really matter anywhere you want. Next, they tell you you should have tongs. These are tongs. These are tongs. These tongs are kind of cool because they have a lock that keeps them together for when you're in the drawer. I like these because of the control. You can really, it doesn't matter. Whatever makes you happy. You just, you're going to need some. You can find these at thrift stores easily. You can also find them at discount stores. I, I was at uh, Big Lots earlier today looking at something else and I almost bought two of these. They had a set this size and like a smaller one and it was 10 bucks. And both of them had locks at the end that you could just easily lock and unlock. They worked, they look really good for 10 bucks. I just already have enough, so who cares? Next thing they tell you to have is a peeler. I'm also known as a vegetable peeler, potato peeler. In this case, it's called a swivel peeler because it swivels. They also make ones that don't swivel. I don't know what the difference is at this point. We'll cover it eventually. Everybody needs one of these. They're really inexpensive. You can find them at thrift stores. You can find them at discount stores. You can find them at Walmart. Doesn't matter. The only thing that's mildly interesting about these is the very end. Whoops, I can't seem to do that right. Anyways, it's curved. What you can use that little curved part for is when you're peeling potatoes, you get those little black spots, eyes, you just whoosh, pop them out. Otherwise, not much to tell you. Okay, next it says kitchen shears, kitchen scissors. Here's kitchen scissors. There's nothing terribly special about them. These are regular scissors. It's just a question of heft. These are not nearly as strong. These are much stronger. Plus, you use these for food exclusively. You use these for everything else. These things, the only thing I would tell you is get a decent pair. Don't buy them at a thrift store. They're cheap. You can get them at all the discount stores. And the main thing is clean them, kind of like with the uh, can opener. If, if, you, if you're cutting through garbage, you know, meat and chicken, and wash them. Wash them often. I wash mine usually if I use anything that's going to be kind of dirty or anything else. Okay. Not much to tell you, just that's what you want to do. Okay, now we're getting into some of the bigger stuff. Next thing is saute pans. Okay. So. This is one of my saute pans, okay? The reason it's a saute pan and not a fry pan is the sides. The sides are more vertical. And the idea is that if you're moving stuff around and sauteing it, it's not gonna come flying out, okay? Because the, the high pan, the vertical sides. I've never owned one of these in my life until the last, I don't know, a year ago or so when I bought the set. This is what they're telling you to buy. They don't mention these. I'm just going to talk about them real quick. This is a fry pan. This is a thing to protect your pans. This is a very cheap uh, non-stick pan. I got it good lots for 10 bucks. They work great. And when I wreck it, I'll buy another. Here's the thing. I've never had a saute pan my entire life. I've always just had some sort of fry pan with a lid. <coughs> and it worked fine. This is a luxury, Any of, but you need one of these, okay? 
any one of them is going to be fine. Next, they mention baking pans. I would think more like baking dishes. Same thing. These are some of mine. All of mine are glass. So one and a half quart casserole dish, two quart casserole dish. There's a couple more in here. They aren't that important. You just need them. I like the glass ones. It doesn't really matter. Here they are. But you use them for making casseroles, you use them for making lasagna, you use them for making baking cakes, maybe. You use them for a lot of things. They're handy to have, they're inexpensive. You can find them at thrift stores. They tend to be pretty scratched up there, but they work. Uh, I also have, I don't have it out right now, it's packed in storage. I have a real tall one that's metal, it's non-stick metal. I bought it for uh, making lasagna. The only problem is it's non-stick and it's metal. Okay, both those are fine, except when you make a lasagna, what's the first thing you do? You cut your lasagna. And when you cut your lasagna, you go right along the bottom and you scratch my new pan. So at some point I'll have to buy another one because I'm just wrecking it making lasagna right now. And the glass ones didn't have a high enough side because I wanted a lot of layers. Okay, next, the one thing I don't have is baking sheets, okay, uh, cookie sheets. I don't have them, they're out in the garage, they're all beat to heck anyways, so it doesn't really matter. What they are, big metal rectangles, some of them have sides on them, some of them are flat, you bake cookies on them, you bake bread on them, whatever. But the only thing that's mildly interesting about them is the new modern ones, they actually have two layers and there's a, an air gap in between. And apparently that helps the cookies and stuff cook more evenly and not burn. When we get to, bake, when we get to baking, I'll probably buy some. Otherwise, not that interested. Okay, next thing on the list is saucepans. These are my saucepans, okay? Most of my life, I didn't have saucepans like this. I certainly didn't have saucepans. I had this. Whoops, I had this. Just a cheap saucepan, okay? Works fine, who cares? The advantage to having two of them is one, you can get the right size. What's neat about a saucepan, really high sides. And the idea is whatever you're simmering in there won't go everywhere, okay? Having two is a luxury, you need at least one. Next thing on the list is a stock pot. This is my stock pot. It's the only stock pot I have these days. This is an eight quart stock pot. I wish I had a bigger one. I probably will buy one. Now, what do you do with this? Well, it's named stock pot. What you would do is when you roast a chicken, you put the chicken carcass in here when you're done, you put some water in, some vegetables, some spices, we'll cover this eventually in a video, and you make chicken stock. Most of us don't do that. Most of us use this specifically to just put water in, boil it, and boil pasta, cook pasta, and we drain it, okay? But you gotta have one. You don't have to have a really nice one like this, but you have to have one. If I had my way, I would have that one. I would have one about this much taller that's also nice. And then I'd buy a really big one, but a cheap one, like at the restaurant supply store. And the cheap one I would buy for picnics and barbecues, you know, uh, corn on the cob, you're gonna uh, boil crab legs, you're gonna boil lobsters, big, you don't use it very often, you're gonna beat it up, who cares? Those are really nice and expensive. The big, tall aluminum ones are cheap, okay? Okay, next, it mentions a strainer. Most of us would call that a colander. Here's mine. I like the metal ones. Some people like the plastic ones. I'm not sure it matters. This one I actually don't like, even though it's metal, and the reason I don't like it is this. There's not enough holes. It actually doesn't drain very well but you can find these at thrift stores, you can find them at discount stores, it doesn't really matter. Everybody needs one, everybody should have one. They're not terribly exciting. Just find one you like. They have some cool ones that, some are like this, some are plastic. They have some cool ones that are like mesh and they have hand, um, arms that come out and go across your sink, so they'll just stay in place. There's a bunch of different ones. Whatever makes you happy is probably fine, okay? Next, measuring cups and spoons. So. Here we are, measuring cups. 
You can find these at thrift stores all day long. Mine, quarter cup, third of a cup, half a cup, one cup. Some people have ones that have two thirds and three quarters and that just seems redundant to me. But they work. These are generally for dry stuff like flour. This is for liquids. Turns out these aren't actually the same. They're close, but they're not the same. For most of what we do, that doesn't matter. Apparently in baking and a few other specific things, it really matters. When we get to baking, I'm going to buy a scale. They say the best thing to do is weigh everything because it has to be more precise. But anyways, there's them, there's those things, and there's this. This is just measuring spoons, teaspoons and par you know, fractions of teaspoons and tablespoons and fractions of tablespoons. Okay, moving on. Almost done. Next thing they mention is mixing bowls. These are mixing bowls. Okay, I'm missing one. This is my middle one. My medium one is at a friend's house. Because I made this homemade French onion dip, like not from a soup packet. Ridiculously good, by the way. Anyways, my friend's kid wanted to take it home with him. I'm like, just take the bowl, bring it back. So I'll get it back eventually. The other mixing bowl, and I have one of these. These things are awesome. Uh, I have a couple of this and a couple of this. These are inexpensive. You can get them at thrift stores. Highly recommend you get some. You just want several different sizes, several different kinds. Don't want to break the bank on it because you just never know what you're going to need. Like I have a couple that are duplicates and they're just handy that way. Because maybe you, you fix something in one and then you might transfer it to the other for presentation rather than have to try and clean up the bowl with stuff already in it. It's just a pain in the butt. It's easier just to transfer it to a different bowl. Okay. All right. Last but not least, whisks. This is a whisk. This is a wire balloon risk whisk. It's, they have different sizes. The bigger the bulb, the more air goes in with every, I don't know, turn. These are some of my other ones. These ones are smaller. I don't use them much. This one's plastic, kind of a fan of it. It's, you can, it's, it's flexible and uh, pretty nice. This one's really cool. The only thing wrong with this is these things are grippy. They shouldn't be grippy. They should be smooth because look at this. It's just, it wants to catch on every little thing. If you do it this way, it just catches on everything. It pulls everything. So I love the idea. I just wish it was nonstick. I think it would work a little better because it wants to grab things. But you need a whisk or two whisks or three whisks but you need at least one because you, you'd be surprised how often you use a whisk. Okay. So that's, that's kind of everything. The, the main thing is depends on your budget. Okay. If you've got lots of money, just go buy everything fine. But for most people, you kind of have to pick and choose and you buy things as you need them. This probably really is, I don't know if it's an essential 20. It might really be more like an essential 25. We're kind of leaving a few things out like, a potato masher. But it's a pretty good list. I mean, it's really not bad. So the thing is, like some stuff, scissors, buy them new. Can opener, buy it new. But like we were talking about, some of the stuff, who cares? What I would do is if I was starting out right now, like I just graduated from high school or college or got married or whatever it is, and I'm getting my first apartment, house, whatever, and I'm going to outfit a kitchen because I want to cook some at least, whether I want to be super duper or just some. Okay. So that's what I'm doing, right? What I would do is I would spend a few days just going to thrift stores and I would be very discerning. Don't buy junk, just some stuff. It doesn't matter. Just find one that's not all chipped and the, the writing is still on it, right? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Find one that works. Mixing bowls doesn't matter, right? Just find some that work for you. Uh, tongs you can get at the thrift stores. Uh, baking dishes you can get at the thrift store. The dishes, not the baking pans, the, the cookie sheets. Most of those I've ever seen are just junk. Ladles, uh, spoons, a lot of that stuff you can get at thrift stores all day every day. So I would go to thrift stores for a day or so and I would just pick up everything you can find that you, you and your significant other, whatever, think of decent quality within your budget, whatever that would be. Okay. 
if things are really tight, I wouldn't buy a, a chef's knife just because they're too expensive. I would buy an inexpensive one at a thrift store that has a, a, a solid blade, no, not, no saw teeth or anything, and then I'd I would just try and sharpen it. And I would try and sharpen it using whatever you could find. So if that means your buddy's got a can opener with one of those crappy sharpeners on the back, go ahead. It's a $2 knife. Who cares? And then hit it with the honing steel and hope for the best. If you have the money, by all means buy chef's knife and paring knife, buy them together, save a little money. Okay. Uh, so I would do all of that stuff. You're not going to find any good pots and pans at a thrift store. It's so rare. I've never seen any that were worth a crap, but some of this stuff you can get cheap. And then, then you have to decide, right? Okay. So let's say I'm, I'm pretty broke. I'm just starting out. I can get a lot of this stuff at thrift stores. I'm going to buy my new scissors and my new can opener and maybe a new whisk, although you can get whisks. Um, but the, the colander, the mixing bowls, the measuring cups and spoons and that sort of thing I'm going to buy at thrift stores, the ladle at a thrift store, the baking pan, pans at a thrift store. Then I'm going to, oh, and the peeler at a thrift store. I'm going to buy a new one of these because I probably won't find one that's any good. If you can find a good one, just buy it at a thrift store. I'm going to buy my spatulas at a, new, at a all right, well, I'm going to buy a turner at a thrift store. I'm going to buy my spatulas and wooden spoons new. Okay. I'm going to buy one of these because I don't have a lot of money, right? I'm going to buy one of these, whatever that means. I'm going to buy some sort of a stock pot. It doesn't have to be really nice. I'm going to buy one saucepan. So I'm going to get by with three pans and a few other things new and that's it. Now, if you have more money, by all means go nuts. But if you don't, you can, you can kind of get by without spending a lot of money. And most of the stuff, nobody's going to know the difference. I mean, does anybody know? I don't know if I got this new or at a thrift store. Neither do you. Who cares? This is just dumb. Nobody cares about this crap. What you care about is this and that. These are where you could spend a lot of money. And if you have the money to spend, by all means, do it. It's just, you, you'll love it. They're wonderful, especially the chef's knife. So anyways, that's kind of everything. I do think I'm going to do a second video soon where I'm going to go through some of my junk drawers and cover some of the gizmos that you might want to buy and a few things like the potato masher that probably should have been on this list. You got to have a potato masher. So I'll make another video on stuff like that. But for now, we're all done. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. And until next time, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.